The first rock and roll music I heard was Elvis Presley. Uh, and then I met some Teddy Boy guys, and then they said, oh, it's not only Elvis Presley, you've got Gene Vincent and uh, Cole Perkins. And uh, when I first heard people like Johnny Burnett, it, it just, it blew me away, and it, it changed my life. You know, not just uh, listening to rockabilly at home, the whole culture of the music, the sound, the clothes, the cars, the women, you know. That would be obviously the 50s when it started and uh, a big comeback in the, in the 70s. And then in the 80s, it became more rockabilly. Rockabilly made a comeback. The 80s was very big with the Stray Cats, of course. Any Elvis Presley fans in the room? Yeah, I used to get in a lot of fights in uh, London with skinheads. Uh, if I'd get on a bus and I'd go anywhere, a dodgy part of town, there'd be a lot of skinheads there. And they would used to chase us on the bus and we'd have big punch-ups and... Uh, but a lot of trouble with the skinheads and mods, to be honest with you. It was Presley's first album. And uh, Johnny Burnett's Rock and Roll Trio. Uh, for me, that is the, one of the classic rockabilly albums. Uh, movies. Um, it'd be like Blackboard Jungle, The Girl Can't Help It. So one of my favourites, The Wild One, Marlon Brando. The normal rockabilly guys are just normal guys who work every day like everyone else, just, you know, middle class, normal class people, you know, who just love going out of the weekend, getting a bit drunk and listening to rockabilly. And, and that's it. It's all good fun. I'm just... Uh, I got into rockabilly music um, at the age of uh, about 15, 16 years old. Um, played for many, many bands in the UK for 25, 28 years. Uh, moved to Marseille about a year ago and created a new band, uh, Mick Wigford and the Toxics.
I love you when you try.